Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. This time, we're going to be taking a look at stuff. Well, you'll see what I mean in a second. <laughs> so here we are with a brand new scene in 3D Studio Max, and the first thing we need to do is find ourselves a model of a head to work with. So what I'm going to use is this skull model from Video Copilot's Halloween Model Pack. And of course, you can use any model of a head that you want for this tutorial. But if you'd like to use this same model, I'll of course include a download link that you can go to videocopilot.net and download the model pack for free. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset these guys to zero. Perfect. And the next thing we're going to need, and most importantly for this tutorial, is the eyeballs. So I'm just going to drag out this eyeball OBJ which is also included in the Halloween model pack. So I'm just going to go in the front view here and line up this eyeball. That looks pretty good and move it back into the head. And then I'm just going to hold shift on the keyboard and drag this over to duplicate our eyeball. And there we go, we have a head and two eyes. I'm just gonna switch this from realistic because it's annoying. On top of including a bunch of models in this pack, we also get great textures for each of the models. So let's go ahead and bring up our material view and I'll just switch this back to compact so everybody can see what we're doing. Here's the diffuse channel for the eyes. So I'm just gonna grab that and drag it into one of our spheres and then open up our maps and add the normal map to our bump channel. That should be good. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add, just scroll down here and find the skull diffuse channel. I'm just going to drop that onto a new sphere, expand our maps again, and we're going to add the skull normal to the bump channel again. Probably bump this up to 50. <laughs> yeah, bump. Let's see what I did there. More puns. Let's see what else we have. We have the specular level. And that's all we'll use for now. So let's go ahead and apply our texture to our skull and to the jaw. And then we'll move back over to our eye material and drag this on both of our eyes. Perfectly horrifying. I like it. The only thing we should change for the eyes quickly is this should be more of a fong material. And then we'll boost the specular level up pretty high and the glossiness up also pretty high and it'll give us more of a wet eyeball look so we can go ahead and close this now that we have our model fully textured now we can move along and play with the look at constraint so the first thing we need to do is set up a few controllers so let's move over to our shapes under the create tab and grab ourselves a circle and just to make this easier on ourselves I'm going to move to the front view and off to the side here we're just going to draw a circle that's a little larger than the eyeballs so that's fine, it doesn't need to be perfect. But then I'm going to switch to my move tool and hold shift on the keyboard and drag this over to the opposite side. And all we want is just to copy and just to make future life easy, I'm gonna rename this to right eye controller. Press okay, now select our other controller and name it. This is left eye controller. So let's move back to our perspective view. And what we're gonna do is align our newly created circle to our eyeballs. So I'm going to select our circle and use our align tool to align it to our eyeball. So I'll just select the eye. And then we're going to need to select not only the Y position, but the X position and the Z position. Center should work fine. So I'm going to hit okay. Next, I'll select the other circle. And I believe the shortcut key for the align tool is Alt A. Oh yeah, look who's on a roll today. So that's good, all the settings look okay. We'll select that. And what we're gonna do is select both controllers at the same time and move them pretty far out in front of our head. And if we go to our front view, you'll see that we have little Harry Potter glasses going on here. That's exactly what we want. So now all that's left to do is add one more quick controller. So we're gonna grab a rectangle and make this a little bigger than the size of the two circles. And of course this needs to be rotated 90 degrees. 
So I'll use my rotate tool and turn on the angle snaps so we can rotate this exactly 90 degrees. Now all I need to do is kind of move this into position. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be close enough. So you can just eyeball it into position. Oh man, I'm getting too good at this. All right, so now that we have our little rig set up here, we can move along to the look at constraint. So first things first, we're going to need to select one of our eyes, move up to the animation tab, down to constraints, and select the look at constraint. What that'll do is give you this little selector here, and we'll just mouse over the corresponding controller and select it. And the first thing you'll notice is that our skull must have just sustained some sort of blunt head trauma and his eyes all messed up and pointing the wrong direction. But we can rebuild him. We have the technology. You'll see that we automatically jumped over to our motion tab and we have some different parameters for our look at constraint. Now this can get pretty in depth and confusing, but all we need to do is scroll down here and look for the look at axis. So we'll just select a different one of these. Well, that actually made it worse. Not rolled back into his head. Z. That's not any better. So if none of these work for you, it's most likely going to need to be flipped. So we'll just check flip. And that's horrifying. But I think Y will get us the results we need. So there we go. Now, you'll see it's looking straight at this controller, and if we move the controller anywhere, the eye will follow. Pretty awesome and disturbing at the same time, which is the way we like it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly select the other eye and do the same thing. Constraints, look at constraint, select our other controller. It also moves the wrong direction, so I'll just slide down here in our motion tab and Y flipped. Perfect. It looks like it worked seamlessly. So now what we'll do is select both of our eye controllers, grab our select and link tool, and link them to our rectangle. Now we're still able to move each eye individually if we need to, but to make things easier on ourselves, all we need to do is grab this rectangle, and we can get both eyes to follow us at the same time. And of course we can have fun for days playing with this, but what else can we do with this effect? So the next thing we're going to do is try and get a little rig going on for our head. So to keep things as clean as possible, I'm going to move back over to our Create tab and move to the Helper section. And we'll just make ourselves a quick dummy object. And we will reset this to zero. Now all we're going to do is select everything on our skull and link it to our dummy object. That way we can rotate our skull as a whole and the eyes keep following the look at controllers. But now what should we do with this? Well, we're going to apply another look at constraint from our dummy object to our eye controllers. And of course it turns the completely wrong direction so we'll just move down here and select Y and flip it and now if we move our controller, the whole head follows. But that's a little weird. That's not exactly how people look around. But we can actually play around with the look at constraint settings to give this an interesting look. So we'll select our dummy box and move to the motion tab for this look at. In the rotation list, if we select the look at constraint, it gives us the option for weight. And what that weight means is how strong of a pull our controller has over our object. So if we move this down to say 20 instead of 100, when we move the controller around, the head will only slightly turn to follow the controller, making our rig look much more realistic for head bobbing. So that's about it. As usual, you know, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helps you out. If you want to check out more of our tutorials, you can go over to youtube.com slash doodlypro and take a look. Look. Look.